Hello everyone, my name is Chen and I'm a third year software engineering student here at the University of Waterloo. I'm here with Professor David McKinnon today and I'll be interviewing him about the Math Finance program as part of the Pick Your Program video series. I'll hand it over to Professor David McKinnon to say a few words about himself. My name is, as you just so ably said, David McKinnon, and uh, I'm the chair of the Pure Math Department and one of the creators of the Mathematical Finance Program. Awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about what Math Finance is all about? Yeah, Math Finance is a program for people who are aiming to be, you know, serious, quantitative mathematical finance people. Like, so the kind of people that, you know, do hard math all day to try to make lots of money. Um, and that's an appealing notion for a lot of people. And it involves a lot of theoretical math and a lot of applied math as well to, uh, you know, to learn the finance, to be able to do the mathematics of finance. <clears throat> but the primary uh, immediate purpose of the mathematical finance degree is to prepare students for graduate study in mathematical finance. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what do you think students should know before choosing math finance as a major? Well, mostly just the stuff I just said. Because, um, I mean, when you're choosing an undergraduate major, right, you want to choose something that you like, but at the same time, you want to choose something that's going to get you where you want to go. And mathematical finance is designed to get people to uh, graduate school in finance. There are a number of other finance programs around the faculty, uh, but um, mathematical finance distinguishes itself by being the ones that uh, the, the one that takes students to graduate school in quantitative finance. Now, there's another side to your question, which is, you know, if, if I want to major in mathematical finance, what should I do? Well, you should take the advanced section calculus courses. Um, so if you're listening to this as a high school student, which probably you're not, it, try to get into Math 147. <laughs> if, as is more likely, you're just wrapping up 1B or just have wrapped up 1B, then mm, pro that ship has probably sailed in one way or another. So in that case, if you haven't taken Math 147 and Math 148, don't try to take Math 247. Take PMath 333. Uh, and that's a sort of, uh, you know, greatest hits uh, collection of the, the most important material from the advanced section calculus courses in first year. Um, and it's designed to prepare students for PMath 351, which is the beginning of the, the, the pure math courses that are the, the core of what makes mathematical finance different from uh, all the other finance programs on campus. Yeah, good advice on course selection. Always important to know. <laughs> Um, courses that you choose. So you said earlier that math finance is designed to prepare you for graduate school and quantitative analysis type of work. Um, how does it differ compared to say farm, pure math, or actuarial science programs? Right. So um, of course those are some pretty different programs you listed there. So I'll take them in turn. So for farm, um, the, Farm is about financial analysis and risk management, right? So uh, it focuses on risk and factors that are associated with risk and mathematical finance does not do that. I mean, obviously you learn a little bit about risk management in the course of doing any finance program, but it's not the focus. Um, so if you're interested in risk, then farm is the way to go. If you're interested in the serious technical quant stuff, mathematical finance is more likely for you. Uh, pure math is on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, pure math is the major to do if you're interested in mathematical finance, but not really in the finance part, right? So you want to do all the, the pure math courses, you know, algebra, geometry, you know, and the uh, analysis, which is uh, uh, the pure math part of the core of mathematical finance. Um, so, uh, but the nice thing about mathematical finance is it's, it's, it's flexible enough to allow allow you to take a bunch of the pure math courses um, at the same time as you do the finance courses. So uh, there's a number of students, particularly strong students, who are interested both in pure math and in finance. Mathematical finance is sort of the ideal, uh, well, depending on what you want to do, an ideal path to follow for those students. The actual science finance option um, 
is different again because of its focus on actuarial science. Actuarial science, you know, is designed to prepare students, you know, as the name suggests, to be actuaries. And of course, there's lots of other things you can do with an actuarial science degree, but there's a lot of actuarial mathematics that you learn in the course of actuarial science finance that doesn't really appear in the mathematical finance plan because we're not trying to train you to be an actuary. So as a software engineering student, uh, my program is a little bit different from math finance in terms of careers. But one thing that I've seen in common is a bit of algorithmic uh, opportunity in quantitative analysis firms. So what sorts of careers uh, can be pursued with your with a math finance program? So almost anything, honestly. I mean, so <clears throat> uh, the great thing about any Waterloo math degree is that it's extremely saleable on the market. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, employers are hungry for students with the kind of technical skills that every single Waterloo math degree provides. Now, as I said before, the mathematical finance plan is designed to prepare students for graduate study in quantitative finance. And then after that, to be um, sort of technical quantitative people at, you know, a big bank or a big investment firm or something like that. Um, or even small ones, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, it, in practice, mathematical finance graduates do, in many cases, go on to graduate school in quantitative finance. But a lot of them go straight into industry and find that they have exactly the skills in any part of the finance industry to, you know, do what needs to be done. Um, you mentioned algorithmic things, you know, Waterloo Math requires all of our students to take computer science courses. That gives them a facility with computers that a lot of other graduates just don't have. And, uh, you know, as as uh, many of you probably know, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of algorithmic questions that are closely tied to finance in practice. Um, you know, things like, you know, people have connected special cables between their computers and, and stock exchanges in order to be able to make trades just a few milliseconds faster that makes a lot of money right and that's not exactly the kind of question that uh, we're training students to be able to answer or deal with in mathematical finance but um there's a <clears throat> it, mathematical finance opens doors all over the place because waterloo math is well known for being good at math and good at finance and our students get jobs with big firms. Our students get places at graduate schools like Princeton and Columbia. Like there's, the world is your oyster, really. He's a cliche. <laughs> For those who maybe aren't too familiar with uh, quantitative finance, could you give a quick rundown on what it is? Sure, yeah. So, um, all right, so here's here's the idea. If, if you're doing science, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point. <laughs> if you're doing science, right, then you probably go out and you collect a bunch of data. And then you want to, like, you know, draw an average line through it. Or, you know, because a lot of data doesn't fit onto a straight line, you know, some sort of nice smooth curve through the data um, so that you can do calculus with the curve um, and, you know, figure out things about, you know, the data you collected using calculus. And you know, for something like physics and or biology or something, that works pretty well. In finance, right, you get, you know, what's the data that you traditionally associate with finance? You know, some sort of a stock price thing with all sorts of jaggy up and down lines on it. Right? And you could do the same thing, draw a nice smooth curve through the, the jaggy lines and uh, then do calculus with it. But the difference between physics and finance, one of the many, is that in physics, you know, the, the ups and downs there are just noise and, you know, unimportant. You want to screen it out. In finance, there's a lot of money between here and here. So you don't want to screen out the noise because there's money to be made from the noise. So somehow you got to do calculus with noisy functions. And that turns out to be pretty hard. <laughs> and in order to do it, um, some extremely clever people, including a, a Japanese fellow by the name of Ito, uh, came up with a way to do calculus with noisy functions. Um, and uh, part of what we 
train you to do in mathematical finance is to understand how to do calculus with noisy functions and what that even means. And in order to get there, it turns out there's a lot of pretty theoretical pure math you gotta do first. And uh, that theoretical pure math turns out to be useful for a whole bunch of other things too, finance related. Um, but uh, um, it's understanding things like that, mathematical structures like that, that can explain really pretty complicated finance and financial things um, that is that is the um, academic core of mathematical finance. Thank you. Uh, very interesting. So what what do you like most? What do you love about this field? Uh, what gets you excited in math finance? To me, the most exciting thing about mathematical finance is the ability to apply pure mathematical techniques and principles and structures to the world of finance and the world of enriching society. Um, I mean, people, <clears throat> a lot of people like to bash finance as something that's sort of evil and it's just the gathering of money for rich people. And it's really not. It really is an engine when it's done properly and ethically. It's an engine that can move the economy forward. And pure math has a significant role to play in figuring out how to do that. And um, that to me is what's most exciting about mathematical finance. Thank you, Professor. Um, so that was my last official question. Uh, and right. I'd just like to give you a chance to say a few closing words if you have anything to say. So mathematical finance is a plan that we created, uh, actuarial finance and pure math together as the way of uh, attracting the best students to pure math and actuarial science and giving them the chance to be able to do um, important things in actuarial science that students are passionate about and important things in pure math that students are passionate about. And it's a, it's a plan that's attracted some of the best students at Waterloo Math and some of the best post-graduation outcomes in Waterloo Math. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much, Professor, for all that wonderful information you've shared with us today. Uh, I'm sure that the people watching this video have found it very interesting. And to those watching, if you have any other questions, feel free to visit the Math Finance website or email Professor David. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on campus.